السلام علیکم آر ٹو ڈیز ٹاپک از دی کرینیل نرو تھرڈ کرینیل نرو وچ از دی اوکلو موٹر نرو سو ویل ڈسکس دا ڈفرینٹ کمپوننٹس آف دی اوکلو موٹر نرو دا نیوکلیا آف دی اوکلو موٹر نرو اٹس کورس ود ان دا کرینیل کیبٹی اینڈ اٹس برانچیز اینڈ دین اٹس کلینیکل سگنیفیکنس دی اوکلو موٹر نرو از دا تھرڈ کرینیل نرو It provides the motor and the parasympathetic innervation to the structures within the bony orbit. Now, the oculomotor nerve has the general somatic efferent component and the autonomic component. The general somatic efferent component innervates the majority of the extraocular muscles within the orbit and uh, including all the recti, the inferior oblique, and the levator palpebri superioris. The autonomic component has the parasympathetic supply to the sphincter pupillae muscle and the ciliary muscles of the eye. The sympathetic component has the no direct function, but the sympathetic fibers, they run with the oculomotor nerve to innervate the superior tarsal muscle, which helps to raise the eyelid. There are two main uh, nuclei of the oculomotor nerve which are located in the midbrain of the brain stem. This is a section of the uh, midbrain at the level of the superior colliculus. They are the superior colliculi, the cerebral aqueduct and the, they are the, these are the crura and the uh, interpeduncular fossa the, or the one the cross cerebri. So, The oculomotor nerve has the main motor nucleus of the oculomotor nerve which lies ventral to the cerebral aqueduct and through this uh, main motor nucleus the oculomotor nerve emerges and these fibers they run anteriorly or the ventrally uh, between these crura into the interpeduncular fossa. Close to this main motor nucleus of the oculomotor nerve is the parasympathetic nucleus of the oculomotor nerve which is called the edinger westphal nucleus. From this edinger westphal nucleus, the parasympathetic fibers, they emerges and they run along with this main motor nuclear fibers or the somatic efferent fibers, the general somatic efferent fibers and they also pass through this uh, inter, uh, between these crura along with this main motor fibers. So the oculomotor nerve emerges uh, from this main motor nucleus ventral to the cerebral aqueduct anteriorly uh, through the brain stem and passing uh, inferiorly to the posterior cerebral artery and superiorly to the superior cerebral artery. After emerging from the brain stem, uh, from the midbrain, it uh, enters into the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus. And in the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus, we have discussed the structures which are present in the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus again and again. And it is very important and you should also again revise the structures and the relations in the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus. So as you know that in the cavernous sinus, the internal carotid artery is piercing in the cavernous sinus and over the, <coughs> along with this uh, internal carotid artery, there is a sympathetic uh, plexus around the uh, internal carotid artery. So this oculomotor nerve within this lateral wall of the cavernous sinus, it receives the sympathetic fibers from the internal carotid artery. Now, these sympathetic fibers, they does not mingle with this main motor nuclear fibers or the general somatic efferent fibers of the oculomotor nerve, but they just travel along uh, with this uh, within its sheath. Then this oculomotor nerve, it leaves the cranial cavity through the superior orbital uh, fissure. Now, at this point, uh, when it enters into the superior orbital fissure to enter into the orbit, it divides into two branches, that is the superior branch and the inferior branch. Now, this uh, blue one is showing you the parasympathetic fibers which are coming from the endinger westphal nucleus. Now, these parasympathetic fibers, they are also running along with this main motor fibers 
and they also pass through this uh, lateral wall of the cavernous sinus and they enter into the superior orbital fissure. Now, at the superior orbital fissure, they uh, run along with the inferior branch of the uh, oculomotor nerve or the main motor fibers. So, it runs along with the inferior branch and then in the inferior, uh, then they supply the parasympathetic supply. So, the, uh, here uh, this is the superior orbital fissure. Now, these fibers, they now entering uh, into the orbit. So, at this point, this is the superior orbital fissure. In this uh, point, the oculomotor nerve divides into the superior branch and the inferior branch. Now, the superior branch will supply within the orbit the superior rectus muscle, the levator palpebri superioris muscle. And as we have said that their sympathetic fibers, they are also running along with the oculomotor nerve within its sheath. Now, they will take the course of the superior branch and the sympathetic fibers, they will supply the superior tarsal muscle to elevate the eyelid. After the levator palpebri superioris has elevated it, they, uh, they keep it elevated, the superior tarsal muscles. So they are supplied by the sympathetic fibers, which are running along with the oculomotor nerve. Now this inferior branch of the main motor fibers or the oculomotor nerve, it supplies the three muscles within the orbit, that is the inferior oblique, the medial rectus, and the inferior rectus. Now these green fibers, they are the parasympathetic fibers, showing you the running along with the oculomotor nerve and then into the superior orbital fissure, and they take the course of the inferior branch of the main motor fibers, so they run along with the inferior branch of the main motor fibers and then they relay to the preganglionic pre fibers to the ciliary ganglion which is located close to the optic nerve in the orbit. Now these preganglionic fibers, they are relayed to this ciliary ganglion of the parasympathetic fibers and then these uh, postganglionic fibers, they are relayed to the sphincter pupillae and the ciliary muscles through the short ciliary nerves. So this is the basically the parasympathetic supply through the short ciliary nerves to the sphincter pupillae and to the ciliary muscles. Now this is the section showing you the arrangement of the extraocular muscles in the orbit. Now you can see here this is the levator palpebri superioris. This is going the superior oblique passing through the trochlea or the pulley. And uh, this purple one is the superior rectus muscle. The green one is the lateral rectus muscle. It is cut to show the medial rectus muscle. And this blue one is the inferior rectus muscle. So this is all of the arrangement of these extraocular muscles to, for the movement of the eyeball. The motor supply or the uh, general somatic efferent fibers of the extraocular muscles, they supply the muscles uh, for the movement of the eyeball and the upper uh, eyelid, the superior branch which is supplying the superior rectus, it elevates the eyeball. The levator palpebri superioris, it raises the uh, upper eyelid. Additionally, the sympathetic fibers which we have discussed, they travel with the superior branch of the oculomotor nerve, they innervate the superior tarsal muscle which acts to keep the eyelid elevated after the levator palpebri superioris has raised it. Now the inferior branch which is supplying the inferior rectus, it depresses the eyeball, the medial rectus adducts the eyeball and the inferior or oblique elevates, abducts and laterally rotates the eyeball. The parasympathetic fibers, as we have discussed, they are running with the inferior branch of the main motor uh, fibers and they are supplying the parasympathetic supply to the, the sphincter pupillae muscle through the short ciliary nerves and uh, the, the postganglionic fibers of the ciliary ganglion, which constricts the pupil, reducing the amount of light entering the eye. And the ciliary muscles, to, they contract and causes the lens to become the more spherical, that is, it means it is adapted for the short uh, VN or the near VN. 
So the preganglionic parasympathetic fibers, they travel in the inferior branch of the oculomotor nerve and within the orbit, they branch off and synapse in the ciliary ganglion. Now, this is the uh, injury of the oculomotor nerve or the oculomotor nerve palsy showing you uh, the drooping of the upper eyelid. So this drooping of the upper eyelid is due to the paralysis of the levator palpebrae superioris muscle and the unopposed action of the orbicularis oculi. And this uh, drooping of the upper eyelid is called the dosis. So other uh, if, uh, functions of the oculomotor nerve will be lost. If the parasympathetic supply is lost, it will lead to the dilated uh, pupil. And there will be the loss of the accommodation for the near VM. Then uh, if the, the action of the recti uh, muscle is lost, so there will be the downward and the outward uh, movement of the eyeball and the eyeball will be in the uh, position of the downward and outward movement. So this is the uh, oculomotor nerve palsy and there are various tests to test this uh, palsy, but it, uh, uh, you should remember just the applied anatomy or this clinical significance of the oculomotor nerve. So thank you. And uh, now you will have your uh, third substage, which is uh, all about the uh, eye, bony orbit, and uh, all the um, uh, structure of the eyeball and the extraocular muscles. So, and all the cranial nerves, uh, that is the third cranial nerve, second and the first uh, optic nerve. So, I will uh, discuss what will be the pattern of this uh, uh, substage. So, uh, I will let you know tomorrow. So, thank you.